My name is Alvin Castro, and today I'll be giving you an overview of how to use the Network Analytics Engine. Before we get started, there are a couple of settings that you'll need to change on the RubyOS CX device, so you need to access the CLI. First, add a password to your username with the command user and the name of the user and password. You'll be prompted to enter the password twice. After that, you'll need to add a couple more commands. The first is the HTTPS server REST access mode read write. If you only want to read access, you can specify that here, but for our needs, I'm changing it to read write. In addition, you'll need to specify which VRFs are able to access the web UI with the command HTTPS server VRF and then the name of the VRF. I wanted the switch to be reachable on both my management and default VRF. Now that we have put these settings, we can now access the web UI by pointing your web browser to the IP address of the switch using HTTPS. From here, you can see the overview dashboard. The top left widget gives a high level view of the network analytics engine showing which alerts are currently active on the device, as well as how many scripts, agents, and monitor capabilities the switch has. By clicking on the analytics section of the sidebar, this takes you to the network analytics engine dashboard. When logging into it for the very first time, there will only be a single script, the system resource monitor, which is installed and enabled by default. The top left section tells you which agents are currently installed and their status. Next to that is the script section, listing which scripts are currently installed, as well as a button giving direct access to the Ruba Solutions Exchange. The top right gives a view of the most recent alerts that have occurred. In the section below are available widgets that can be populated based off of the installed agents. Note that the Aruba OS CX webpage is modular and responsive. If you click this layout management icon and unlock the page layout, you have the capability to change the size of the widgets and where they are displayed. That same icon allows you to lock the page to save your changes. Let's go over the built-in system resource monitor that is running on every AOS CX device. If you click on the name, it takes you directly to the agent details page. The top left shows the agent details, such as the name and version number. With this icon, you can view the script itself where you can download it directly to your device for editing, as well as the capability to go directly to the script details. The pencil icon gives you the capability to edit the agent parameters, which I'll get to further in the video. Next is the status pane, which gives the current alert status of the agent, such as normal, minor, major, or critical. If the agent has advanced features, it can be listed here as well. For instance, if baselining is enabled, it would show whether the baseline is currently learning here. This particular agent shows that it is system created. In the top right is a list of the most recent alerts, where you can navigate to that point in time on the graph or view the alert details directly. The bottom left section is the parameter listing. Depending on the agent, you can have zero to many parameters. You can click on the question mark next to a parameter to view the description for each. Parameters are essentially variables that you can change on the fly for each agent. If you want to change parameters, click on Edit Agent. Many parameters specify interface numbers, thresholds, or time intervals. On the bottom right, we see the graph of the agent. By default, it is running on autopilot and shows the live feed. You can click on different time frames for it to automatically view back a day, 30 days, or more. The NAE can actually go back as far as 400 days. If I want to zoom in on a particular area, I can drag and drop over a scope of time and it will automatically adjust the graph and zoom in on that time frame. You may notice purple diamonds occurring on these graphs. These are actually configuration checkpoints that are viewable on all agents. So whenever there isn't a configuration change 
we can see what lines are added and changed with the green and red portions. The alert window also allows you to navigate and zoom in on a particular time frame on the graph. If I click on this alert and navigate, it adjusts the graph to that point in time when the alert occurred. Here you can see a few triangles that occurred. These are the alerts. Red signifies a critical alert. Yellow signifies a major alert. You can click on a triangle to see the alert details, including the alert level and the actions that occurred. In this critical alert, we can see that the NAE agent created a syslog event and then performed three different CLI commands. This information is stored on the NAE, so users can look at this time slice of the device status when the anomaly occurred. Next, let's go through the process of how to install a script and agent. By going to the script section, you can see several options at the top. We can upload a script from MyPC, we can create an agent from an already installed script, we could download a script to MyPC for editing, and finally, this icon takes us to directly to the Aruba Solutions Exchange. After clicking this and reading through the license agreement, it will take us to a screen that dynamically populates the scripts from the Aruba Solutions Exchange database that your machine is able to install. We can see that the ASC has scripts that range from services and health like DHCP to configuration management, physical device monitoring, to interface statistics and states, to routing protocol and monitoring, and more. For any of these scripts, you can click on one and choose to either install directly on your device, download the script to your PC for editing and viewing, or view the script to see what it does. More details for each script can be found on the Aruba Solutions Exchange. You also have the capability to filter the scripts based off of your name or tags, and you can click on the gear icon to specify what columns you want to see. Let's install a couple of scripts. First, I'll install the single interface state monitor. You can check mark this box to save the running config to the startup config as part of the installation. When you click confirm, you should see a success page. In addition, I'll install the lag health monitor. After you have a script installed, if you go back to the scripts page, we can see them listed. However, by installing a script, you're only loading the code onto the device. You don't have a running instance of the script until you create an agent. You could have multiple agents per script. Click on a script and then click Create Agent and this new window will pop up. Give it a name and change any parameter values according to what you want to monitor. I'll specify interface 1148 and then click Create. This shows that the agent was successfully installed. And it immediately takes us to the Agents window. If we click on the new agent I created, we will see the new agent details. Usually it will take several seconds to pop up, but I force it to refresh by clicking the Live button a few times. This agent will now alert me whenever the interface goes down. Next, I'll create an agent for the lag health monitor, where I'll specify two different lags to be monitors. This agent can monitor up to eight lags each, so I'll specify two lags on this system, and we could see how they are both represented on the graph. Let's go back to our system resource monitor and edit the threshold parameter. I'm going to click the pen icon next to the agent details and scroll down to the short term high threshold. Then make it very low, as low as 10. This essentially states that when the CPU usage rises above 10%, it will trigger an alert. After waiting a few moments, the agent will trigger an alert and we can see in alert details that it created a syslog event as well as performed a few different CLI commands.
Finally, let's go back to the NAE dashboard one more time. Now that we have more agents running, if we click on the plus icon next to an agent, we can see that it creates a widget on the dashboard page. We can also close out any agents we don't want to see and replace it with any of our lab agents instead. That way we can customize the dashboard according to how we want to see it. Thanks for watching. Look forward to more videos by the Aruba Bots on the Airheads Broadcasting Channel.